Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Joe, where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today I have the spin. Uh, so I am got this machine because uh, you, the subscriber, has voted to uh, make this the, the next super automatic that I reviewed. I did this all on Instagram. I made some posts and you know, had a bunch of different ones pitted up against each other. And the spin one, actually, to my surprise, um, it is kind of a unique machine, so it's not necessarily the biggest surprise, but I had some machines on there that were $2,000 plus, dollars, uh, like the Jura E8, I think, was one that was quite expensive. Um, but this uh, this little guy, which uh, I think it, I, when I bought it, it was $649, so it's a pretty reasonable priced uh, super automatic. Um, but there is a couple of caveats and, you know, there's some other things I want to talk about. But before we get into it, hit the subscribe button, like the channel. Uh, it helps me out a lot. Um, and, yeah, we can uh, hopefully get you a, a good giveaway here soon. Uh, if we hit 5K, we're going to give away a grinder. So that'll be really fun. So definitely do that. Uh, and we'll get to that as soon as we hit it. Um, and then in terms of the spin here, I want to kind of go through this in a couple of different ways. So my normal videos, I do pros and cons, and I plan on doing that. I'll make a shot of espresso, give it a taste. And before that though, I wanna go ahead and go around the features of this machine because it's kind of a feature rich machine for, uh, for a super automatic, especially at this price point. So I wanna talk about that and sort of the differences between a traditional super automatic and the spin. So. Let's start with the features. In terms of the features, uh, the main things that I wanna go over that are like different about this than a standard super automatic is first of all, it's spinning. So, uh, you know, it, with the name spin, they really lean into it. Even the design of this, as it's like sort of cylindrical, they're kind of, you know, still playing off of the spin uh, idea. And that is how this is brewing coffee. It's not doing um, a pressurized, I mean, obviously there's a tiny bit of pressure, but it's probably like one or two bars. Um, it's not like a traditional nine or in super automatics, uh, a lot of times it's like 12 bars. This is super low bar, but it's spinning and using centripetal force to um, sort of make a newer, more, you know, new age version of espressos and stuff like that. Uh, and I guess the question to that is, is it better? Um, and that, you know, we're going to kind of answer that later on in the pros and cons, but that's what I think they're trying to do here is, you know, revolutionize a little bit of the espresso brewing and coffee brewing experience. Uh, it does make sense to me that like, you know, spinning uh, coffee is going to, you know, make the extraction quicker. Um, just like pressurized espresso is much faster. Um, but you know, it's an interesting idea and it's definitely, you know, something that other coffee makers are going toward, uh, such as the Nespresso pods, the new Nespresso pods. Um, another big feature of this is the app. So I'm actually gonna jump on my phone. So the app is another thing that is uh, really setting itself apart with a lot of the other super automatics. Some of them are starting to do it now. This one has been doing it since it started a few years ago. So uh, it was one of the, kind of the first to, to market with this uh, app style. So on my phone here, uh, if you look, you have a lot of different options. Um, you can go right into making an espresso, a ristretto, a lungo, americano, you have all these different things in here. And that's one thing with the spin is they really want you to use this app because it's all sort of centralized on using the app to make your beverages because these, and, and you can customize it. You can set some of these drinks to your custom settings here uh, on this like little guy, but um, it kind of gets complicating and it seems like they really want you to use the app. The other reason too is that if you see here on the market, uh, you can, you know, take a quiz, get your coffee, and they really want you to set up a subscription or buy coffee through their app. Uh, and the reason why is they have a scanning system where you scan a bag and you can then um, actually sync that with your um, spin. So it actually does change some parameters. Um, 
I'm not sure how much it's changing the parameters. Uh, it doesn't seem like a ton. Um, I'm gonna maybe in the pros and cons, we'll show you some of the big jumps because right now I have it set up to be using a different coffee that's in there. So I'll scan the bag and we'll kind of compare and contrast. But um, it's kind of, that's kind of their, their pitch to you is like every coffee distributor has set up their brewing method or, or parameters for the coffee that's in there. So it's kind of unique and I do like that, but um, it also does try to get you to spend a lot of money on their services. So, you know, be in mind that you might be spending a little bit more money, especially if you use their service. Okay, so now that you know the features, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of this machine uh, and maybe some of the pros and cons of those features I talked about earlier. So first up, Let's talk about the pros. I really like the top to here. It has a nice seal, so it feels like maybe the coffee's gonna stay a little bit fresher in, in this uh, bean hopper. It has a pretty big bean hopper as well. Uh, and along with that, um, you do have a nice kind of metal. This is a really nice kind of grippy feeling. It's like a rubber casted or rubber covered metal um, tray. And what's nice about this is it goes in here, but then you could pop it up and kind of put it right there. So if you want, if you're brewing espresso, you can get your cup a little bit closer uh, to retain the crema that it's, um, you know, crema that it's making. Uh, I say that because it's sort of a, obviously you're spinning, so it's not quite the same. But um, it is a very, I actually do like this. It's a very nice piece. Um, it's high quality, it feels sturdy. Uh, and then I also like that every, most of, most of the things that you're gonna get to on this machine are mostly done from the front. You can kind of lift this up from the front. You can access all your controls here from the front, the drip trays in the front, and the bean hopper is also whoop, in the front. So, uh, you have a lot of that. The only downside is the water tank. The water tank is in the back, but we'll talk about that later. Another pro that I like are, is the fact that you do have that connectivity. I do like the ability to, you know, just look at my phone real quick, go through there, select a drink. And I do like the, the different types of drinks. You can go through and make a cold brew. You can make a nitro cold brew. Um, you could make a, which again, it's not, not truly a nitro cold brew. Obviously there's not nitrogen in here, but it gives you kind of the feeling of a nitro cold brew. Uh, you can make espresso, you can make a ristretto, you can do all that stuff right from there. And I do like that. Um, I do kind of wish they would put maybe a screen on the actual device to be able to do that, um, right from there instead of always having to go to your phone. Um, you know, for me, I I'm sometimes will just put my phone away and, you know, walk on with just my Apple Watch just to, like, you know, disconnect a little bit. So it is somewhat frustrating that you have to go to your, your phone every time you want to, like, make a sort of a different drink. Uh, or you want to make sure the parameters of the drink that you're making are set to your liking and maybe not what's pre-programmed on the top there. So... Uh, Overall, I do like the connectivity, but um, you know, there's there's definitely room for improvement on there. Um, other thing I do like about this machine is really the size of it. I think that this machine is pretty small for what it's doing. Um, there's not a lot of machines that are uh, this like narrow and also not this deep. It's a pretty it's a relatively small footprint. Um, when you're talking about like diameters and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's a little tall, but it's definitely not like crazy. So you can kind of fit it in some spots that you might not be able to fit other super automatics uh, in, especially like if you have a little corner piece, you could probably fit it in a corner um, instead of, you know, having to set it out in a specific, you know, section of your counter. Um, so I, I do like that. Okay, we got another pro for you. Uh, in the back of the machine, you have a little area to uh, put in an actual water line, which is very nice, especially at this price point. Most machines don't let you do that. So I think that's a really, really nice feature, especially for people that you know already have a water line near there, or maybe they're putting it kind of near their sink. It's pretty easy to set up a water line 
uh, and it makes it a lot easier, especially if you don't uh, have a, you know, you, you have to replace this water a lot, so it's kind of a nice feature. Uh, the other thing I do like is being able to customize uh, your drinks. So in the app, you can actually go in, you can actually go in here and you can hit espresso, you can see that, hey, we've selected the Monarch blend, but maybe you don't like the way they're doing it. So you're gonna move the grams up and maybe move the fluid ounces down a little bit. So I, I like that you do still get some customization. I wish that they would let you mess around with the water temperature. Um, it definitely has that ability. If you go to do a cold brew, it lowers the temperature of the brew unit uh, and the water to pretty, pretty, cool it's not exactly cold it's not um it's like i would say it's like lukewarm probably around 85 degrees to 90 degrees um but even and maybe even lower around like 80 but i i haven't got to measure it yet but either way i know that it does have some temperature control so it would be cool to see that added um especially if your you know coffee that you're using isn't pre-programmed into this machine or their service um Anyways, uh, so I think we can move on to the cons uh, because there is a lot of cons with this machine and it is a new uh, manufacturer doing a new method. So as you would imagine as a startup and stuff like that, um, there is some cons. So let's get into that. Cons. First one up, water tank. This water tank isn't bad, but it's a little small. I'm finding that if I, when I use this on a daily, I only used it for a couple of weeks, but when I, when I did use it, uh, and especially if you're making like full cups of coffee, you really only got like maybe four in here. This is like a one and a half liter, um, tank. So it doesn't really, um, it doesn't let you make a ton of beverages, um, that much. And the other thing is, uh, when you're switching between hot and cold beverages, it uses water to cool down its uh, brew chamber and everything. So if you were to do that, you're gonna fill up this drip tray really quick. And that leads me to the next thing. The drip tray is pretty small. Um, it's not, um, I actually think it is probably, I was gonna say it's not the smallest I've ever seen, but it is probably the smallest drip tray I've ever used, um, which is fine. I think that they were going over, they were going for the ability to use this machine in small places in maybe some areas that you wouldn't expect a machine to be able to be used. And um, they sacrificed some things like water tank and drip tray uh, storage for, you know, being able to keep it small. And I understand, uh, but it is kind of a bummer that it's as small as, as it is. Uh, so uh, next thing I don't really love about this machine, um, like I mentioned before, I don't love the interface on the machine itself. The app is pretty good and I do like the app a lot, but the interface here is a little uh, bit to be desired because you kind of, if you just were to walk up to this machine and you don't know anything about it, you really don't know what you're making. You see a large cup, you see a medium sized cup, and then you see a small cup. And in my head, you'd be making an espresso, maybe a Americano cappuccino, like a six to eight ounce, and then maybe, you know, an 11 ounce. But uh, it actually is basically, I believe it's a ristretto, a lungo, and then a, a large, like an 11 uh, ounce cup of coffee or eight ounce cup of coffee or something like that. So it's not exactly intuitive. Uh, and then getting um, your things pre-programmed on your favorites is again, also not the most intuitive thing. You kind of have to read through the app to get that programmed in. Um, and it's, it's not, it doesn't just show up and say, hey, do you want to make this? You've been making this drink like three times in a row. Why don't you make this, you know, your first favorite thing? It doesn't do that. Um, so there is a little bit to be desired with. Okay, next up are these indicators. Uh, you have the grounds, you have water, you have beans, and then you have the drip tray being full. 
and they're all relatively intuitive. They're not my favorite, but um, it's not it's not bad. Uh, but I will say with that comes some kind of weird things like the coffee does seem to need to be pretty high in this machine uh, for the bean indicator not to go off. Like if I like just move, I poured like a half a bag in there and it seems like if I like move coffee around or if I just make a couple of cups, if I don't like have a decent amount of coffee in there, the bean indicator comes up. It'll still let you make a coffee without that bean indicator like turning off, which is nice, but it kind of shows up before I think it needs to. We have gone through the pros and cons and now it's time to make some coffee and make a final uh, score on here. So we have equator coffee here. This is decaf, it's a little late in the day. Right now we are currently set to Monarch. So I'm gonna show you what those parameters are right now. So it's saying coffee 11 grams, size two ounces. So let's go ahead and scan this bag in and change out the coffee that we have in there. So we scan the bag. Is this your coffee? Yes, it is. Load recipes. Oh God. So <laughs> this is the downside. We set this up on my wife's um, on my wife's phone. So I'm not the technical owner of this machine. She is. So that has been one thing that I have had some issues with. So I can't actually load the coffee. We have to switch to her phone. So let me go ahead and do that and then we'll jump right back. Okay, so we have officially scanned that in. Just be aware that if you are two people in a house and you share the device, you definitely can't do that. And there's some other things you also will kind of have run into. Uh, mine disconnected a few times. So that was kind of a frustrating little thing that I had to kind of delete the maker and then re-add the maker a couple of times. So just be aware that for some reason the, the access isn't quite the same for a guest user or a shared user. But anyways, with that said, we have the Tiger Espresso up here, the Tiger Walk Espresso, oop. And I did link it up. We put all the recipes in there, as you can see here. And the, the drink hasn't changed, not a bit. So really the main thing that I think it's sh changing, and let me just quickly show you, is the specials. Uh, I think this is where things kind of change a little bit more. Um, but again, I haven't really noticed a whole lot of things changing when you, uh, when you change out the coffee. So what I'm going to do is customize this to the way I like it, which is I normally do 16 grams of coffee, especially for two ounces. It normally makes, uh, or fit, you know, you know, down to 15, but 16 grams normally is what I, I, I do in my standard, you know, shots. So we are going to hit make drink and let it do its thing. So, and it's kind of cool. This app does kind of show you a little like loading screen here and you can see like how far it is in the process of making the coffee. But, um, that's another thing that I've kind of come to realize is this machine, if you're hosting, maybe isn't exactly the fastest at making coffee. It takes a little bit of while for it to heat up, to cool down, you know, spin, and uh, the grinder is probably fine, but it does seem to take kind of a while to make just one cup. So we will be back with you once this is done. So it is currently brewing. You can kind of hear it spinning. And, and you can start, sort of see some crema forming on top. So, this is all done. I don't know if you got in there good, but it's not bad. You do have a little crema head on there. It does dissipate very quick though. So this is not, um, if you're used to say the Nespresso spinning system, uh, that makes a ton of crema. And if that's what you're looking for, this is not that. So let's give this a taste real quick. Start talking about the flavor. It's not bad. Um, I, I'm not, it always kind of, it, every time I've had a shot of espresso, to me, it's always tasted a little over extracted. Um, 
I, I, and I just can't seem to get that right. I will say the ristretto actually tastes pretty good if you, but if you, if you like ristrettos, but you're kind of, um, having to make, if you want like a full shot of espresso, you're kind of having to make a decent amount of ristretto. You gotta at least hit it twice and it takes kind of a while. But, um, in terms of the standard espresso shot, uh, whether it's a one and a half or two ounce, it does seem to taste a little over extracted. It's a little watery. It's definitely not, um, it's not the sort of syrupy, sweet um, espresso that maybe you're used to. So yeah, if, 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 what, if what you're looking for is an espresso machine, I might not go this route. I think I'm ready to score this machine. Been using it for a couple of weeks now as sort of my daily driver. Um, uh, and I also use it, you know, as my decaf machine sometimes. I, I've, I've switched back and forth a couple of times. Um, but I am ready to give it a score. And that is gonna be a 6.4. It's not bad. It's not great for an espresso lover. So let me kind of tell you who I think this is for. If you're somebody who is on a pod machine, that wants to get off pods. If you're addicted to pods, get off the pods, bruh. Yeah, just, uh, it's a kind of a nice machine for that. You hit, you know, you, you put real grind coffee, you know, in here and then it grinds it out and you, you have, you know, a pretty good, you know, you have a, a much better experience than with something like a Nespresso or a, you know, Keurig or something like that. It's making much better coffee. Um, and the other thing I will say is if you're somebody who actually really, really likes cold brew coffee, this makes a pretty good cold brew. Um, I tried it a few times and I actually found myself really, really enjoying the cold brew coffee, especially, especially the nitro cold brew. Um, that came out pretty good. It's basically just using the uh, like espresso trick where you're, you know, just you know, steam, you could steam espresso with ice and it kind of makes it like a, um, sort of a nitro cold brew type thing. And that's sort of what this is doing. It's spinning it to give it enough crema to make it a, a nitro style cold brew, but it's actually pretty dang good. And the standard cold brew is also really good. And the cop, the Americano is pretty good. I actually don't like the cold brew or the, um, standard drip coffee. So if that's what you're really into is like a pour over style coffee, it doesn't, it's not my favorite. Uh, maybe some other people think it's better, but uh, I've had, you know, much better pour over style coffee, um, especially out of, I, I can't say it for sure, but the TKO2, the demo one I got to use, that gave a really, really good drip coffee. Um, so I think it's for some people that, you know, are, if you're looking for, for cold brew, if you're looking for, Americanos, uh, I definitely go this route. The other thing too is it doesn't have a milk frother. So definitely if you're somebody who likes milk-based beverages, look a different way because the option for the milk uh, carafe on this is literally just a cheap little um, spinning you know, device that you could buy for $30. So if you're looking for that, just go to a, a standard you know, super automatic, something like the Philips uh, you know, 3200 or something like that. Anyways, with all that said, uh, again, the score is a 6.4. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.